breaking up. And we are live. Hey guys. Howdy. We are live. <laughs> Look at Tommy. Tommy. Tommy shucking the cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> my, 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 yeah. my youngest son tried to call me and I was messaging him tell him I call him back afterwards and I kind of distracted myself <laughs> yeah okay oh god there must be some kind of lag anyway somebody's watching live I guess at the same time anyway we are here we are back we are strange journeys live stream podcast and uh, we appreciate y'all being here I appreciate the ETs and whoever's watching right now because a few more will come on. It always happens that way. We only get a few right at the beginning and then more people add up. All right. I've told you before about the ETs. That's my executive team. And that's we're the ones that put all this together to uh, do this live stream for those of you watching so that, that you enjoy it. That's what we're here for, to entertain you. So... We're going to introduce everybody that's here right now, and then we're going to talk a little bit more about what they do. We got Christine Rogers down in the bottom there. We got Donnie Mills. Say, hey, Donnie. Hey, Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> and we got Tommy. <laughs> and Tim. And Andrea. And of course, I'm Tom. All right. Um, before we really get into the show, I want to remind you we have the merch sites. Remember, we have uh, places you can go to buy things just for you know the show. You know, different things, and we'll be I'll be playing some videos about those later. But also, I wanted to remind you about our Facebook page, Strange Journeys. So please come over there and like the page get involved with what's going on, but we also have our group called Strange Friends, and for whatever reason, and I, when I when I built this group, there was nobody out there called Strange Friends, but when I went to do the, the, the name, the custom name, it wouldn't let me do Strange Friends, so I had to do four. So, please come visit us there on Facebook. Now, uh, Today we're talking about the black hat, and I wanted to show you, I have been the black hat man before. There's an old glossy promo from a few years back <laughs> with my with my black hat, which it's, it's in the other room, I forgot to get it. And there I am performing live with the black hat. So yes, I have been the black hat. <laughs> All right, one of our uh, one of our new sponsors is uh, the Grave Hunter Society, and that's done by Andrea and her husband John. So, Andrea, update us on that real quick. Um, we have been doing freelance research, genealogical research, uh, property research for well over a decade. Uh, we love urban exploration. And so we thought, you know, we've got enough experience under our belt. Why don't we go ahead and do something with it? So we are the Grave Hunter Society, and uh, we tend to go above and beyond. Our um, catchphrase is not everybody wants to be famous, but no one wants to be forgotten. And yeah. so we help you find those who are, you know, kind of stuck in the past. And you know, we kind of specialize on the macabre and twisted. We enjoy doing that. Um, so that also kind of gets our fingers into a little bit of the paranormal. And uh, so we also will do uh, video and photography analytics. And um, oh, wow. yeah, and we really enjoy that. We just got oh. fin just finished doing one last week. So. so, okay, yeah, you take uh, recordings and look for EVPs and videos and look for anomalies? Yes. And oh, we're able to break it down and be able to show you uh, sometimes <laughs> that, you know, it's not a ghost. It's, you know, something very reasonably explained, you know, right. but it looks good on film. So <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, we'll be playing a little promo video for, for the Grave Hunter Society here in just a little while. Uh, Tim, what's going on with Raven Wind Tours in the books? Right now, uh, Raven Wind Tours, we're not running currently. 
we're having lots of problems here in Kansas where we've got some updates that are happening with the coronavirus here, especially in the cities that we operate in. Hopefully you're hearing me. Yeah. Um, but what's going on is they've got several outbreaks in Topeka and then in Lawrence and in Wichita that are affecting our business. I know that we've got some private tours scheduled at this point. So hopefully we can get to a few more of those. Even if you know, we only have four or five people, we'd be willing to do that. Get out there and oh, yeah. the tour, you know, so you have a limited group because we've already said it. So we've got a limited to, I think it's 15 is the most that we can have. But in the meantime, the state is backing us off saying, here, you can't gather at this point. Kind of sucks that we're not able to do that, but we'll figure out yeah. we'll figure it out as the year goes on. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, what's the update on your latest book? My latest book, um, I'm rewriting the intro to that with this, with the entire Black Lives Matters issue going on, lots of stuff. It, it has me going, okay, how much do I want to adjust this? Because you can't really talk about the era of bleeding Kansas without getting into slavery. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, so it's going to be hard to figure this out. <laughs> but, you, got but this, so, you got this, man. Good. You got this. Hey, Christine. Hey, Christine. Yes, I'm sorry. How, are you doing? <laughs> How are you? I'm doing better. I'm actually Good. doing a lot better today. Good. Well, where are we at on the book? You've been updating us on a few things. Well, <laughs> um, I'm actually in chapter six and almost at chapter seven. So I'm almost halfway done. Yeah. Yay. Excellent. Great to hear. All right. It's, it's been an emotional roller coaster ride. And let me tell you, uh, yeah. everything that I, I write, it I feel it a hundred times more than what I put into the into the book. So yeah. yeah, the happy times are real happy and the sad times are well, they make me cry. <laughs> yeah. As I'm writing, I'm sitting there, Poo -hoo -hoo. but you know, it's a work in progress. It's and you're old school, right? I am. I yeah. am very, very, very old school. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah, but this, right. one is, this one through six is done here, and this will be um, six through eleven. Awesome. So yeah, it's it's a work in progress. A lot of work. Good. Good. <laughs> All right, Donnie. Yeah. Where are we at with the music? Didn't you play a, an open mic last week? Uh, yeah, I did an open mic in Fairhope, and I've got five people that want me to start. I just, uh, oh, I just uh, <laughs> had carpal tunnel surgery. Yeah. Those two sexy beasts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting my, uh, I'm getting my, my hands back and. I'm ready to get back out there. I, once you get out there and then you have to come off the road, it's an empty space that only music can fill. Yeah. I feel you, brother. Yeah, that picture was uh, when he was hosting an open mic at the place he just did recently, and Lynn and I went over, and they had to get a picture of us together. What he what he call us? What was that? What was it? What did you call us? Um, Lord, man, I can't remember what I ate for supper last night. I'm not <laughs> sure. I, th I thought he called us two sexy beasts. I don't know. I was just. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll yeah, make, make you Randy, baby. <laughs> 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 hey Tommy, I know uh, I know we're going to be talking about in a little while uh, about one of the uh, people that's experienced the, the hat man. But um, what's some of the other stuff that you've come across here in the past week or so? Tommy, I lost you there at the end. Oh, okay, just. Just update us. I, I know you were trying to get over to somebody's house to do a walkthrough or something for some investigation. Yeah, well, actually, there's two. There's one that a lady's been having some issues with in our trailer, but the COVID has her up. She's a little more fearful of it than what I am. So she. 
to wait until all that's straightened out. There's another lady I've been talking to that I would really love to go check out the, her land if she will allow me to. I'm still still in the process of talking with her. But uh, now, didn't she say she had found some artifacts? artifacts? Yeah, she's been having a lot of issues, and I'm believing. Well, okay, Tommy, you're 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 stuck. <laughs> some of the artifacts that she told me. They told Okay, Tommy, you're you're lagging yeah, like now. Yeah. All right. Well, he told me a while ago she had found an arrowhead with a was it an arrowhead or something with a double X carved into it. Something two stones that has has or a stone that has two X's carved into it. I haven't got to see it yet, but I'm wanting to go look at them and. Do it, take a little walk around the fields where she found them, and I kind of think that some of her issues might be connected to the amount of artifacts that she's still picking up. Could be, could be. I don't know for sure yet, but I'm still in the process of talking to her. So she go let me go walk her walk and walk them fields and yeah, the woods right there around. Okay, good. I'm wondering if she hasn't accidentally cut into a burial mound or something. Could be, could be a burial mound. Well, keep us updated. Right. Okay. You guys ready to get started on the show? Yes, sir. Here we go. So are you ready? All right, remember we start each show with the latest sighting. Now, the sighting this week actually happened a couple of weeks ago, but it was only just posted in the last couple of days. I think, um, yeah, so, but anyway, so it's current and Tim's here to tell us about it. Tim, I got the pictures up whenever you're ready. We've actually got two aquatic cryptids that have been seen this in the last few weeks. The first one is going to be the Loch Ness Monsters. The, the pictures really started circulating about last Saturday. Um, right. A guy from Scotland right around the Loch Ness area was out walking. He said he saw the creatures begin to surface. He took multiple photos of it. We've got three, I think, that I've got there for you. One is actually the, the back of it that is shown. You've also got one that is taken from a distance there as well. And then I blew this thing up to pixelate it because lots of people are claiming that it's either a catfish or the, that it's a um, seal. Um, and so I took some circles. You can actually see if you look out further out, there's actually a head there that is out further in the water. You've also got front and rear fins. And then you can see where the tail is still moving in the water there. Um, so I don't think we're looking at a catfish. I don't really think we're looking at, at the seal that they're claiming it is. I think it's actually a Loch Ness monster. He just didn't see the head come up. Um, now, did somebody say it could have been a sturgis? They, they, they're actually thinking that there could have been a sturgeon. Um, but the problem, sturgeon. With it, yeah, the, the problem with the sturgeon. I'm is thinking the biker rally. Right. Up in, <laughs> up in South Dakota, everybody needs to go to that, right? There you go. <laughs> I was, no, I was they, about they to say, what is a sturgeon doing in the water? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, uh, I found a video that uh, of this similar thing but tell us about the other one first the other one is related to here in kansas and in, in oklahoma we have what is called the verdigree river that runs from about coffeeville kansas down into um osage county uh oklahoma and what happened was here this past week there was somebody that saw what they claim is the verdigree river monster which is supposed to be an very much like an octopus, but there are no freshwater octopuses that are out there. 
When it's been seen in the past, it's usually 15 to 20 feet long. The one they saw this week is only about five foot long. So we're talking about something that is a younger creature than one of the older ones that is out there. Kansas removed it from the Kansas's official website because here in Kansas, we don't own any haunted properties and we don't claim that there are ghosts or monsters living inside the state of Kansas. <laughs> Even though the Verdigree River um, here in Kansas does have a law that says that you may not tamper with, touch, assault, maul, or capture the river monster while it's inside the wild river. Right? <laughs> Actual law on the books. Right. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, you got me to thinking, and I and I checked, and I, I found this video. It was just posted yesterday, and um, I'll share that with y'all now, but if, it's also a Loch Ness sighting. Some of those are pretty clear. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, you can think sturgeon or seal, <laughs> but um, but here's the thing. If you notice, I put in there it was verified by the Loch Ness sightings group. Right. That's an actual group. That their website is LochNessSightings.com, and I went on there and I found where they had posted this one. Now, there was some discrepancy on the date because the YouTube video I found said June 3rd. Their website said June 9th, but regardless, um, we had a sighting. <laughs> there was something there. So you can go to this LochNessSightings.com and find the latest. Now, before this one, I think April was the previous sighting. So, what'd you think about the all of this? I think it's interesting that we've got so many sightings that are occurring of aquatic ones at this point. Um, just, just to see them out there, and to have so many Loch Ness monsters within the last month even, shows that there's a lot of activity going on with that creature out there. Yeah. Well, it, you know, it brings up the, the what was it? Uh, I was listening to a podcast the other day. There's three distinct possibilities here. One, it's an actual creature, an actual real creature that has not been discovered yet. And that's where we get the term cryptozoology. And number two, it's something supernatural or paranormal. Or the third possibility is it's not of this dimension. And that brings up the talk of portals and such, which that's fodder for another show. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get there eventually because uh, I think part of portals is one we're going to have to to dig into one day. What y'all think? That'll be fun. All right, Tim, great job. I, I think that's also about the river monster there that they actually have a law protecting it. Yeah, passed in 2013 to protect it. And then they go, oh, we don't have one here. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, there was some other place that did that. I just had the thought. 
Uh, we lost Tommy. Uh, some other place did a law like that to protect UFOs or something. I, anyway, I can't remember where that was right now. All right. We are uh, at the point where we uh, bring out and introduce our new sponsor. So it's time for a commercial break. <laughs> sort of, kind of. And, and like I've explained to y'all before, we don't sell ads, okay? The sponsorships that we have are what we as a group are involved in extracurricular outside of this. And we want y'all to be involved in it. So welcome to the Great Hunter Society. Huh? If we don't, if we don't pay for our ads, why'd you take fifty bucks from me before we went out? Yeah, <laughs> you know, well, you do what you got to do to survive. <laughs> That is awesome. I love that. <laughs> yeah, that, that is great. All right. So give us the website again. It is thegravehuntersociety.com or you can email me at Andrea thegravehuntersociety.com. So with two S's. With two S's, yes. Grave Hunters <laughs> Society. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, a little inside joke. The first video I did, I was missing an S. So, all right. Now we're going to get into our topic of the day. Beware of the black hat. Now, um, Andrea brought up a point a little earlier as we talk about the history. Um, share what you were talking about a while ago with the 20 years or whatever. Explain it. Oh, I just thought it was pretty interesting that uh, when we were all talking in our group chat that several of us have had experiences, but they were 20 years ago. And then some of the experiences I had caught prior, like when asking around, those had happened about 20 years prior to, you know, our experiences, which would probably <laughs> like saying that's like around 90, like in the later 90s. So, you know, go back 20 years. And it, it kind of made me think of um, the Jeepers Creepers guy you know, who also has a black hat that every so many years he would come out to grab some food, us people, and then take it back to his cave. Well, these things are coming out and feeding. You know, it just kind of makes me wonder if like they're kind of coming in waves and then if they're coming in waves, let's say, you know, I wanted to say like in Ohio, but we've got people all throughout the US who are having these experiences. I just think it's pretty interesting, you know, that, um, around that same time period, we all experienced something that we can't explain, but it's right. very similar. So uh, it makes me wonder what was going on. Well, it's also the uh, kind of a, a plot to uh, Stephen King's It. That was 28 years, I think, in that book. <laughs> it was that yeah. demon would come out every 28 years to feed on on children. <laughs> anyway, as far as, as, as far as an actual, yeah, Pennywise with the red balloon. <laughs> All right. Um, and the, as far as the history goes, um, there, there's no actual detailed history. Okay. But it starts with the shadow people. Right. I mean, that's, it, it seems like in everything that I've gone over, um, it's like it, it, it's almost like it evolved. Would you agree? From 
you know, a shadow in the corner kind of thing. And um, I, I mentioned to these guys recently, um, I don't think I've ever seen a hat man um, or, or awakened in the middle of the night and seen a shadow figure. But I have been on investigations and seen shadows that moved intelligently. Uh, on, on video where it, you know, you could see a darkness move. Um, the, the earliest that I can remember actually seeing something, is I was driving south on Highway 63 in Mississippi years ago, years and years ago. Um, but it was night and it was dark, but there were, you know, lights along the road, houses and whatnot. And I remember seeing probably about 50 yards out my the driver's window, um, basically flying at the speed that I was driving, just a patch of black. And, and I mean, as I'm driving, I look over and I just see this black thing moving with me. And if I slowed down, it slowed down. If I sped up, it sped up. But it just, and it, and it, I guess you could say it followed me for several miles in this patch of blackness over to my left. Just, I mean, it, when we go past the light, the light would disappear. So this patch of blackness just followed me for several miles and then it just disappeared. Hmm. Let me, what was some of the first. You've heard of shadow people. Anybody? The first time I heard of shadow people as um, an actual entity, you know, uh, something that is, you know, a, like a, a specific kind of ghost probably was around um, the tour days. Yeah, when we had to delve into more different types of entities, I, I always kind of just figured um, until that time, a ghost is a ghost is a ghost. And so I just kind of was like, it's all the same thing. I didn't realize that, you know, that these shadow things are actually something completely different than, you know, a Casper, you know, so to say, it definitely doesn't come off like it's something, the friendly ghost at all. It's definitely more than just a, uh, hey, grandma came back to see, you know, how we're treating, you know, her stuff, you know, so I, I think that that's when I, I really learned that there was something separate. This was a separate thing. Well, when Andrea mentions the tour thing, <laughs> her and Tim and I used to be with a national tour company and, um, and leading haunted tours and leading investigation during those tours. And yeah, we all got an education there. <laughs> we, we may have gone in knowing some things, but because of the, the broad scope of the tours, uh, yeah, we, we delved into a lot of different things. And so it was a good education and a good time. I mean, um, it, I, it ended and I hate it ended, but uh, if it hadn't have ended, we wouldn't have this today. <laughs> That's true. Because this grew out of that. Tim's Raven Wind Tours grew out of that, you know. Uh, the Grave Hunter Society grew yep. out of that. I mean, we we some good things have happened because of that. Now, the progression of these sightings and in all the research and the, the videos and documentaries I've seen, we're looking at now. Y'all just y'all help me out here because what I see it begins with most in most cases when someone's sleeping. Most agree? cases. Most cases. And then in, during sleep, you're awakened at some point and you experience sleep paralysis. And now, like I said, to me, this I see this in most cases when they, they wake up and they can't move and they can hardly breathe. And then, like Tommy's mentioned, there's a temperature drop. Now, I didn't, you know, I haven't heard this in all cases, but a temperature drop usually occurs with a sighting. 
Now, I experienced a temperature drop in a cemetery investigation once where we were uh, standing next to a grave. And I don't remember if he died in, in war or in battle or whatever, but it was, I mean, it was obvious it was a veteran's grave because it had the and everything. And uh, so we're standing there next to it. And it was already about 40 degrees out there. And we were all in our coats bundled up, you know. But you would walk past this grave, and it was like you stepped into a freezer. Yeah. I mean, a dramatic drop instantly. And it, it, we actually could find parameters to it. You could reach your hand in, and you could feel when it started, when it stopped. And it ended up being like a, almost like a box, about a couple of feet wide and a couple of feet deep and a couple of feet high. It had, I don't know, but you could, you could move your hand through it and your hand would almost freeze. And we sat there and observed this for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. Everybody was out there. Right, let's, let's take our hand in there, you know. And, but, <laughs> I mean, Tommy said that um, with his sighting, and we'll, we're going to go into his sighting a little later, but he, he noticed, and then, of course, when it was over, the temperature went back up. You know? But bef before the sighting, usually, um, is intense fear. I mean, is that what you guys have come up with? Are these the things that you guys have come up in your research? That's yeah. so what I came up with in the research it, that it causes, you know, uh, a, it's malevolent feeling. Did I say that right? Uh, <laughs> that you, you just, you, you, it's very looming. And my experience, I didn't feel that way though. But um, yeah, I have watched somebody have that experience and they yeah. behave that way. So, you know, that's what I've seen. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, <laughs> I to get an understanding of something, I have to break it down. That's just me, and so I, I, I see, I see kind of a progression here. You know, you're asleep, and then something awakens you, and you, you can't move. You feel the temperature drop, and then it's it's like an overwhelming, um, for lack of a better word, paralyzing fear. And then, and from what I've noticed, again, I haven't experienced it. This is just for me looking into other stories. It's like you experience all this before you see anything. Yeah. It's like you, you, you sense something, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. are you all seeing the same thing? Am I? Well, there's been one time where I didn't get the cold feeling. But mm -hmm. the opposite. It was really, really hot. Like I was, my skin was wow. burning. And then, you know, I saw something that I still can't explain today. It was, uh, mm -hmm. wasn't necessarily the black hat man, but it was more of a feeling and a dark shadow. Mm -hmm. And it scared, you know what, out of me. <laughs> and I, I just, I've never been able to pinpoint exactly why it happened or anything like that and that's been years and years ago but it was so hot that i just could not stand to be in that room it's like it completely enveloped the entire room and i had wow. to and i couldn't go back for like two days wow because it was just so hot well let me let me say this and you bring it i mean you're saying that um makes me think I don't want it to, I don't want it to seem like I'm I'm building a method here okay because everyone's experience is going to be different everyone's experience is going to be unique but I'm just seeing a pattern you know I've seen the the cold the temperature drop in several of the sightings but then Christine has one where the temperature uh, was raised so you you never know but then i believe is when people first see something and and 
And this is where I believe the progression happens, where um, I, from, from everything I've gleaned, they see the shadow first before they see the hat. Is that, in, am I picking that up accurately? Yes. Yeah. I think so. I think it depends on the situation. True. When I, when True. I saw mine, it was all at once. You know, I think it depends on the situation. What I researched, it looked like it, it just kind of depend on the on the individual's experience, you know, um, how awake they were, you know. Um, yeah, I think that plays into it also. Um, also, when you're in a state of fear, it's hard to remember. So some people may say, you know, oh, it, it was just a shadow. And then all of a sudden this form when it yeah. may have been it just took that long for them to kind of process what was going on, but it was already there. Yeah, because your your senses are, are on high alert, but then you're, you're um, like you said, your processing may take a, a little bit. Uh, I mean, when you're seeing something like that. So yeah, I can see that. Uh, I mean, I, that makes sense to me, you know, but Here's the another uh, um, another common thing is after it's seen, it seems to move closer. You know, and it's it's almost like it was waiting to be seen. You know, it it, it, it when people wake up and they look up, it's every account I've read and watched on video. It's almost like. It was on the other side of the room. It didn't. They didn't open their eyes, and it's right in their face. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think I think it's waiting to scare you. Yes, <laughs> I, I think it's like waiting to intimidate you more. You know, I mean, it's one thing to see it across the room. It's another thing than all of a sudden it's on top of you. You know, uh -huh. that's terrifying, especially if you feel like you can't move to defend yourself. Right, like it's waiting to be acknowledged. It's yes. well, waiting for dinner. What was that? You... I said, it probably I did say Donnie. <laughs> hey, Tommy. Yeah, okay, take turns turn now. Water, you know? Yes. You're saying it feeds off of fear? Yeah. Yeah. Tommy, what were you saying? I mean, that's what. Yeah. Who, me? Oh, it just, it's like, you know, like good feeds off positivity. We do living, the more positive, the better our life is. You know, shadow people, when they get right up on you, they're trying to elicit that fear feeling. And to me, that energy kind of, you know, flows back and forth. Yeah. I could be wrong. I might have been drinking. No, that makes sense. No, it makes sense. Wow. Hey, Tommy, what were you saying? Yeah, I was kind of joking there a little bit. She said something. He was waiting to scare you. Well, it worked. He stood there waiting on me. He scared the fire plum out of me. I ain't going to lie about it. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I agree. I agree, too. I agree with I agree with Donnie. Uh, fear, it's just a, a form that comes out of, out of you in a form of energy. And I think they feed on that energy. Yeah. Well, that's that's what I'm, I'm seeing here is you open your eyes and you see this thing across the room and – you are already sensing this paralyzing fear, and it's almost like when when you connect and you see this thing, it's drawn to that fear. It, yep. it was also something I've noticed in the research is um, it wanted to feed on your fear, but they also showed up in a time when you're already susceptible because you might be emotionally exhausted because right. of things. It's definitely, I noticed, more of an emotional exhaustion, 
you know, uh, the physical waking you up and making you tired plays into it. But it seems like you're, there's something that's already been pulling on you and your family and your life at your job or all of it. You know, so it makes you you're not on your guard naturally, you know, so it makes you more susceptible. It yeah, seems I mean, like that's what I found in researching. You know, they were already dealing with trauma. Right. And and uh, I think uh, Tommy's dealing with a situation now where a woman is is seeing this on a regular basis, but she also has other stuff going on in her life as well. So that, that they're, they're probably feeding off of each other. You know, awful. Yeah. Go ahead. She said that her last sighting was just about three days ago. Wow. Wow. We're going to talk about some of those in depth in a minute. Uh, but the next thing that I seem to think that this shadow person does is they they lean in close, and some people have said they even touch them or, or get right up on their face. And now that would be just, uh, you know, God, can you imagine? <laughs> I just can't even, you know, you, you wake up vulnerable and then, you, you know, you're already experiencing all this and then this thing just slides up on you. And that's, that's another thing. They said they don't like walk. They just glide. But, you know, they've been described as a shadow um, but then also the hat, the hat has taken different forms. You know, I think, uh, uh, Tommy described it as an old preacher's hat. And that's, that's, that's come up with several of the things that I've gone over. It's like that flat brimmed, um, hang on, let me see if I got it here. From Poltergeist. Poltergeist too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that just flat brown back. I didn't. I didn't load up that picture. But anyway, um, that or a cowboy hat or a fedora um, or a, a top hat. I've heard each of those. Have y'all heard anything else? I, I, I've heard a cloak. Oh, sorry. Cloak. Cloak. I've heard a cloak and. Uh, the, the hag, the night hag, that it can come in like a, I don't know how you can tell the shape of a woman, like a shadow hag woman, but they say that they, it, they that it has a female almost presence, you know, so. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, to me, that's a different, um, what did you say, a different manifestation. Um and, and I mean, it's actually, I've heard cases where it was actually described where they could see the face and it was like an old woman, like the uh, pictures we get of an old chrome witch. When I, when I looked into it, I thought of the conjuring one Bathsheba, the, the woman that was on top of the, you know, wardrobe when she was hiding. Um, and she was the, the entity that, that was possessing the place. She was terrifying. Wow. PGs. You know, she was absolutely terrifying for the show. Uh, that's what I always envisioned. And so, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Have any of you guys ever heard of like seeing a nun that wasn't actually there, but they saw him there? An, a nun? Yeah, like that's a lady dressed up like a nun. Is. Like the cloak. You know, the I habit. thought, I kind of thought, yeah, like the habit, like it made me wonder if yeah. that's what they were describing. Because I've I've heard people saying that they've you know seen somebody dressed like a nun before in the habit and all the gear and the necklace and the rosaries and stuff like that. Did they feel afraid? Like were they like? Did some yes, some no, um, because of a Catholic background. They were yeah. They knew what it was, but those that didn't have a Catholic background, they were like, oh my god, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> Wow. I mean, anything at night that wakes you up is going to scare you. But I mean, like, did right, they like you're standing at the foot of your bed and you're sitting there going, uh, what do I do? My kids terrify me in the middle of the night when they come in. Right, right. <laughs> but like a ghost, you know, the, the habit, I just made me wonder, did they have the same feeling as the hat man? You know? No, it wasn't like a paralysis type of thing. It was more of a catch it out of the corner of your eye. 
uh, was that really yeah. what I thought it was type of a thing. Okay. All right. In Topeka, I know that the students talked about um, the the old convent was used as a class as classrooms in the seventies, and they talked about there being a nun that was always at the top of the stairs that didn't exist and used to scare the students to death because they'd be running late for class, and here's this woman dressed right. up as a nun that wasn't there. Wow. Wow. You know, when, I was, when I was younger, um, I went to a Catholic school and you always saw a nun somewhere. So you really couldn't differentiate besides, you know, one being see-through. But, uh, you know, you'd be going to class and all of a sudden you see this nun and you turn to look and she was gone. It wow. was like, Got us to class quicker. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Well, let me ask you a question. Why do you think a hat? You, you know, I mean, I, I've been asking myself that since I first heard of the hat man. Why a hat? You know, why not horns? You know, why not uh, say uh, Medusa snakehead? But why a hat? That it is may be, it, it may be a time period type of thing. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Like maybe back in the eighteen hundreds, the grave digger. They had right. these flat hats. Yeah. yeah. And they were scared of their own self. That's what I saw the first time I saw one. It was like I was asleep, I woke up and it was standing right at the foot of my bed and it was dark. And there was a little light coming through the window, but I distinctly saw a black figure with a hat on. Yeah. And yeah, yep. I embarrassed everybody within three miles. <laughs> exactly. Now, you know, I mean that you know, while I can I can get on board with it being period, but um I mean, in situations like Tim's going to share in a minute, um, it would kind of make sense because of the situation he was in. Uh, but what if you're not in Victorian or you're not in England and you see a man standing there with a Victorian top hat on, you know, or, or whatever? Or, or if you're, you know, in southern Florida and you see somebody with a cowboy hat on, it, it's not always going to, you know, that's not a common occurrence or say New York City and you see a cowboy hat on. I'm well, see, you could also look at it as they basically dress the way you're accustomed to seeing things or they they do what they do because they can feel your energy. So they do something that you're similar with or something like that. You know, I'm just spitballing yeah. here. Well, <laughs> well, we found I found reports of where the hat man would be seen anywhere from Canada Plum to uh, Japan. Right. So there's yeah. you know, I don't think that, Japanese has maybe three back yet. I may be wrong, but I don't know. Yeah, that's good His, I historically I don't, wide maybe. wide brim hats have been around for centuries. You know, right. I mean we have the witch's hat, which was actually a German gardening hat you know i i mean they've been a, they've been around for a long time to keep the sun off of our shoulders you know um even some you know armor for you know military had a brim around like their helmets so uh, i i think if we go back you know we can go back to you know you know way back and probably find some sort of head attire that had a brim and you know so historically, I, I, I can kind of think that maybe a brim hat has always been around, you know, or a head, a protective headpiece. You know, two, right. two if you, if like different people, it might like come from inside, the, the, like he's going right back to fear. You know, they might have, the hat might signify something inside them that touches that. Right. I, yeah. I mean, something from that person's past that um, for some reason a hat would in, incite fear. That's that's a unique take. I mean, they, that could very well be part of it. You know, it's just 
it's just one of those things that um, be, that has puzzled me since I first began to research the Hat Man. But one thing about it, shadow people are interesting, and people get a little creeped out and afraid of them. But something about seeing the hat takes it to a whole deeper, more evil level for some reason. I, you know, it's it's almost like, um, well, one I said, uh, or one of the documentaries I saw talked about the hat man actually being kind of a a leader of evil entities, like he's the boss, whatever. I don't know. I don't know. So he's usually described as six to 10 feet tall. And we've already talked about the different types of hats. And we've already talked about the fact that sometimes the shadow figure is called the old hag. And sometimes, and we hadn't brought up yet, sometimes they're described as having red glowing eyes. Now, have you ever, um, do you know what causes in a natural sense, I'm not talking about the hat man, I'm not talking supernatural or paranormal, do you know what causes red glowing eyes? Isn't it the light reflecting off the back of the retinas? Yep, exactly. But it doesn't happen in humans. It only happens in animals. And I should have brought up the, the research I've done on that before. I mean, we get like, um, I mean, you've seen it um, when we take pictures of each other and we all get the bright eye, the, 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 the red white. eyes. Or, yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's usually that, but I mean, when I've seen it in, um, in investigations where you shine a light around, you're taking video, you know, and, or whatever you get, people get a, just a white glow in their eyes and then you shine an animal and it's got that red kind of thing going on. And I may be just talking out of my, my head here, but <laughs> sometimes they show up with facial features. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. I'll show some pictures that I found, but uh, sometimes we've seen actual facial uh, witnesses have described facial features. You know, most of the time it's not. Most of the time they just see the dark caped figure with a big hat. And, but sometimes I've actually heard descriptions of, of facial features, eyes, nose, mouth, that kind of thing. Have y'all heard that too? Yes. I've heard that a few times that you've got some facial features and some people are like, well, I remember seeing a mustache or. I, yeah. I remember the eyes. I, I remember the chin, how strong the chin was. And it's like, mm -hmm. okay, wait, that doesn't usually fit where you're where you're looking at shadow people. But it does make sense, too, in some ways. Because not a, I don't think every spirit is able to, to manifest themselves completely. And so sometimes I think that when you have some of these shadow people that are out there, it's another spirit that is trying to manifest and does not succeed in doing so. Yeah. Right? Exactly. All right. Well, it's time for another commercial break. We'll be back right after this.
our very own author, Christine Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> so go check out her books on Amazon, Books of Megan, and um, my mind just went blank. Barnes and Barnes. There you go. Find her there. <laughs> All right. Now we want to get into some actual witness accounts. Um, Andrea, you had told me or told us that um, when you saw what you thought was a hat man, it wasn't at night. Well, no, it was at night. It was at night, um, but I was awake. Um, it was, you know, it wasn't the witching hour or anything like that. I was, um, it was back in 90, 97, uh, 96, 97. Um, and I was staying the night with a couple girlfriends and we decided to go pick up a pizza at Little York Pizza. It's a little pizza dive. And so we had, uh, it's on the, like on a corner street and we had to park a few parking lots down. So there was five of us and we're walking down the street. It's main street to our left. There are street lights we're on the sidewalk. We're walking single file. I don't know why we just were. <laughs> and I kind of, I'm in the back kind of making sure I was always the one that trying to, I didn't want anybody to be left out. So I would put myself in back to make sure that everybody got to be a part. I hated it if somebody was behind us being left out. So I'm in, in the back and I kind of just doing my own thing. And I look down at the ground and I'm watching our shadows, you know, bounce, very nice shadows. I get to mine and behind me is a six shadow and it's a profile you know, so I thought it was interesting of facial features. I, I mean, I could clearly make out, you know, uh, the nose and the chin and the brim of the hat. And I got goosebumps. And I kind of <gasps> and turned around and looked and there was nothing there. And then I went back and looked and there was nothing there. So now I'm standing here. My friends have left and I'm like trying to figure out like, what could have caused a shadow walking with us, you know, because it was definitely a, a human. It was a human shadow. It was just like mine and the four other people in front of me. And I was kind of retelling this to John, my husband, um, right before the show. And I said, you know, I came home the next day, told my mom about it. I told my girlfriends about it when we got back. You know, and I, they all kind of just blew it off, um, kind of like, okay, you know, and I could understand that, but it bothered me so much that I would draw it in. Like I said, you know, it was kind of like a therapy, a very therapeutic. I would draw what I saw all the time. And I said, you know, it's almost like when people have alien encounters, they would draw the gray man and, you know, and try and like they yeah. were consistently drawing it, trying to get it out of their system. Well, that's, I think what I was trying to do was trying to rationale and just draw what I saw right. over and over. So, but that, that's my, I mean, it's very short experience. I know what I saw it. It takes a lot to make me scared. And I have had some situations in, like paranormal, unexplainable situations where I have been very afraid. This didn't make me scared but I didn't like it. You know, right. I, I, I didn't, um, I was very uncomfortable, you know, and I'll be honest, I never went back to the pizza place again. And when I was going through the situation with John and also telling a couple of my friends about it, I was thinking about what my friends were involved in. I had one friend, um, I went to, I didn't go to a Catholic school. I went to a Christian school. And I went, I had one friend who was dating a boy who ended up being um, exercised at school. Wow. Um, and then I had two other friends that were very heavily involved in um, recreational drugs. And then another, the other friend was also battling um, demons. That's what she called it. She was seeing things at night. That's one of the reasons why we were staying the night is because she didn't like to sleep alone at night. So we all just went over to hang out. So I, you know, I don't know if maybe I saw something that was attached to one of them. I kind of was a hunky dory kid, you know, <laughs> like, you know, I didn't really, I was kind of a boring kid. I didn't get involved in a lot of stuff. So I don't know if I saw something that 
um, was attached to them or wanting to feed off of them. Right. I have so, a question for you, Andrea. Um, have you, when you were younger, did you ever draw pictures of shadows and stuff like that that you couldn't explain and people looked at you like you were completely nuts? But you personally had that experience and the only way to express yourself was to draw those pictures? I did. I did. I talked about things a lot. Um, I, when I was young, I used to tell my mom about heaven. Um, I guess I waved at a kid once and my mom was like, Who's that? I was like, Oh, we played together when we were in heaven, you know? So yeah, I, wow. I know that I, I definitely would see things and was told, Oh, it's just your imagination. Yeah. Well, what about yeah. the rest of you guys? Have you ever as a child drew pictures and you couldn't explain it to anybody? Uh, you I know, drew like, American airplanes shooting down Japs. <laughs> oh, that. No, I don't. Th I mean, uh, no, but I I definitely am a shoe in for like cell memory, genetic memory. Um, so I sometimes wonder if my fascination for um, a lot of antiques and eras that, I mean, how many 14 year olds do you know that go, I want to decorate my room like a Victorian bedroom? You know, uh, <laughs> um, I, I, yeah, that's awesome. Awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> well, I, just, I just started talking to my father again, and it's brought up some memories of pictures that um, I drew when I was little. And I don't remember drawing them, but he said that I did. And there was some shadow people in there. I mean, wow. you, had, you had the typical, the mom, the dad, the brother, the sister, the dog, and blah, blah, blah. But there was always somebody off to the side that didn't necessarily have a face, but it was just like a shadow. And um, wow. I remember Whoa. that today, and it was like, I don't even remember doing that. But well, he showed me pictures of it, and it's cool. like, wow, okay. <laughs> Well, speaking of drawings, I collected a few to share today of witnesses to the hat man that actually drew what they had seen. See what you think about these. That's supposedly what they saw. Hmm. Kind of creepy, huh? Now that one's just... That's that's, yeah, that's where they said that they feel like the hat man was kind of controlling all these other entities. And here's another one along that line. Yeah, see, Ow. I've had pictures. I've drawn pictures like that, that, that a long time ago. Wow. I've seen something like that. But that, that wasn't, I would never thought it was a hat man. I saw something very similar. What'd you say, Tommy? Yeah, he's got like four other entities. He had like four other entities right there with him, but one trying to pull the covers on the bed, but the hat man was actually standing behind him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's standing, see, he's standing back there behind him. And then the last one, to me, this That's is the creepiest. That's about like what I saw. Wow. And then... uh Tim sent us this, this is, just a few minutes ago. This is, I'm trying to think of what year this would be, 2016, 2017. This was taken by a guest outside of one of the, uh, the building itself was built in 1888. It's an old stone building, but the guests, when they went back to look at it, could see a form that was standing right there. It's a place that we actually get temperatures. It will jump with the digital thermometers up to 300 degrees in that spot. Wow. It makes no sense is why the temperature is so high right there because it shouldn't be jumping that high. But you put your hand in it, you're not feeling the heat. Um, but why it's in that spot, I have no idea. That's kind of crazy considering what Christine said just a little while ago. Right. The That's coming off. Yeah. Right. That's, see, that's a new one on me, guys. I'm, you know, I'm not that I'm the most experienced with the paranormal, but I, that's one I've never come across with was temperature spikes. 
You know, I've dealt with the, the temperature drops, but not the spikes. That's that's a new one on me. Wow, that's I, pretty cool. Go ahead. I was just I I've I've never come across anything like that, but I've read about a few accounts of it, and it usually. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't, I might be wrong, but isn't that usually when you have a temperature spike, like it's supposed to represent that you're really in the presence of something kind of evil, you know, like it, it means you, it's harmful. I, I it, I'm really new at that one. And that's just all yeah. I, I, I seem to know. You, about know, it, you, you know. start feeling like a, a, a heaviness on you instead of in the cold where it's like, you know, okay. But with the heat, it's just it's so heavy that you feel like you can't move, but you have to move to get away from it. Otherwise, it, could, right. it feels like it would consume you type of a thing. Wow. wow. Now, the building right next door to that one belonged to little John Pendergast. His brother was a mafia mob boss in Kansas City. And there are people that talk about they get locked in the basement storage room all the time. That they'll, they'll they'll go in there and all of a sudden the door will just slam on them. There's nobody else around. Uh -huh. And so I'm and I know that in would be 1925, I think he and his uh, little John and his buddies had a, a gunfight right there inside that building right next door. And so I've often wondered if this is an overflow from that incident. Oh, hey. Could be, <laughs> could be. All right. Well, I dug on YouTube and uh, and and I was actually trying to find video evidence, and uh, I actually found one and a picture that was taken. It could be the Hat Man. See what y'all think about this. Well, wow! One of them standing in the window. That and it, you know, like they explained when I found it, that's an old flip phone. You, you can't just you can't download and manipulate those. No. You know, how they got it off of there, I don't know. They may have just sent it somehow. But and then the guy at the uh, that was actually a wedding reception. I mean, it, that one to me, you know, it could almost be somebody standing there just in, in the shadow so it didn't show him clearly. So I don't know. But that first one, something was standing. That's pretty cool. <laughs> that was pretty cool. All right. What's going on down here? Okay. Tommy's in and out. Okay. Tommy, where'd you go? All right. We got Tommy back now. <laughs> 
All right. I know we've gone over an hour, folks, um, and we still have a lot to cover. <laughs> what did you say, Tommy? I said my feed here keeps kicking me out. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Um, are you, you think you got it good enough where you can tell us about a couple of stories you've gotten on the hat man? Yeah, I can try to. Skipping will let me. Let's see. Go my first one. First one we was talking about a while ago. This is one we was talking about a while ago. A young lady had called me. And part of this happened just like I said, Wednesday night. She was working in her garden, messing with her in, on one end of her garden. See, she got the feeling kind of funny. Felt like somebody was watching. She looked up, and at the other end of her garden, he was standing right there looking at her. Wow. And she done the state, looked away, looked back. He was still there, but he just about five minutes, about a minute, he just disappeared right in front of her. And as far as the shadow people, she said she's been seeing them for the, for the longest since she's been there since March. But she don't just see them pop up. Even inside and outside the house, both. Sometimes, like in the house, they'll be up towards the ceiling or down towards the floor, just normal height. Right. The same thing outside. She'll see them where it looked like the, uh, I forgot what you call them, off Harry Potter, the little smoky demon looking things. But anyway, she'll, she'll just see these black blobs with a face in them. Sometimes at the in the limbs of the trees, so, you know, sometimes at the base of a tree. Once in the middle of a garden. And the first time, or the first time she actually seen the hat man was inside her kitchen. She was on one end of the counter getting stuff, prepping stuff for supper. She felt she had that feeling again, looked up. He's standing at the other end of her counter looking at her. Looked at her just for a second and disappeared. No, face, no facial features, no red eyes. Said to her, it felt more. He felt he didn't feel evil to her or bad to her. See, she said he felt like he might have been a messenger. Huh. So, so she wow. actually had a calm feeling when he was too. Good. Right. I mean, that's good. Awesome. Did she get a message? Did like? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Here's hoping. Not yet. Yeah. We gonna look for. <laughs> All right. Okay, Tim, tell us about the one that you experienced. When we moved to Kansas, it's a, we moved here in two thousand one. We actually used to live right across the street from where we're living at now. Um, it was late one evening while we were living there, and I just remember something touching my leg in the middle of the night, like petting my leg. And of course, I wake up and. This, this man, I remember him standing there that was just shadow, but I remember the cowboy hat was what I remember about it. Him standing over the top of me, and it was still a few seconds before I screamed, if, if it was even that long. My wife, of course, wakes up. By that point, he's just gone. Um, but but it bothered me that I it was reaching out and touching me and like caressing me. Um, and, of course, I sat up late that night, you know, scared to death you know but i'm reading a book with my book light on and about an hour later i heard what sounded like a stagecoach or a wagon coming down the wow. street and we don't have that you know in town anymore uh, the, the amish people just moved here about a year ago so we weren't seeing that at that point but you could hear the thing thundering down the road and i ran out to the porch didn't find anything out there um but where we were living actually the, the original town, Burlingame, is actually one of the oldest cities in, in Kansas, dating back to 1854. The block that we're on actually used to be the livery stable, and it held about 200 head of horses. Wow. A lot of horses here. Burlingame used to be the biggest city in Kansas prior to about 1878, 1879. 30,000 people living here. It was one of the only places where the railroad crossed the Santa Fe Trail. And so everybody was coming through here. In fact, our street is still, it's so wide that people park on both sides of the street <laughs> and in the middle because they would turn the wagon trains around in town. And with that livery stable being right there. So, so to me, it was like looking back at it, I'm like, I, I wasn't so much afraid. It was more of, hey, wait a second. This is 
somebody coming back. Maybe they're just here visiting their horse. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but it was still startling enough that I'm screaming. Um, and then talking with the landlord later, she had been painting in the house prior to us moving in. And she was working real late at night. And as she was painting the, the window sills of the house, she said she walked as a shadowy man with a cowboy hat, walked through from the living room and into the dining room. Wow. She never worked in the house late at night after that. <laughs> but it scared her to death because it was a shadow. Yeah. And it's like, there's nobody else in the house with me. Wow. That then and that one you feel like probably had some connection to the past. I think it did, you know, yeah. just because of the location and what was going on, you know, in the area. Uh, and then, like I said, about an hour later, that sound of that wagon or stagecoach coming thundering. Right. Down. I mean, you right. Hear the horses. It, it was very loud, and I'm like, it woke my wife up. Do you hear that? Oh yeah, I hear it. But I'm so kind of like a residual there. instead of a, a intelligent honking. I don't know. I think the wagon may be a residual. I think the, 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 the man in the hat was definitely intelligent. Ah. Like, you know, especially to sit there and reach out and touch somebody. I mean, it's on the fire yeah. of my leg, and I'm like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Donnie, you mentioned this uh, earlier. So tell us, uh, you know, exactly what happened with your hats, Hat Man sighting. Uh, you're breaking up. What'd you say? Your your story. You mentioned it a while ago about the hat man. Tell us exactly what happened with your sighting. I've had two times. I um, I was about 13, I think, and I was asleep, and something woke me up, and I remember it. There was a black figure standing right at the foot of my bed, and he had the flat brim cap like we were talking about. Right. And the second time I was, uh, my father had died and I was in Tuscaloosa going to college and, um, row tide and <laughs> I was home. had to throw that in there, but I came home. My mother had moved into my, with my aunt and I had came to, uh, came to the house to pick up some things and I felt, like you said, this chill that gave me goosebumps. And out of the corner of my eye, I saw a shadow walk from one room into my parents' old room. And Donnie got up and made haste to get in his car and leaving. <laughs> that, that, kind of, uh, that kind of piqued my interest. And ever since then, I've loved anything paranormal. You know, I've lived in three houses that were just downright evil. But I divorced well, not one of them, so. I <laughs> I'm right there with you, but yeah, yeah, I understand. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry you threw me off. We got a private chat thing, you know. I I, I wish I'd thought about ordering pizza. Doggone it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually sounds pretty good right about now. <laughs> yes, it does. All right. Before we get into the um oh wait a minute. I thought I had something else here. Did I have oh no, I've already done that. <laughs> I'm confusing myself now. Uh before before we get into our I, I we've got some more questions and suppositions. Um I wanted to remind y'all that we do have merch sites. <laughs>
All right, I saw some of y'all dancing. I need to buy one of those coffee mugs. <laughs> what? I need to buy one of the coffee mugs. That way I'm not oh, yeah. drinking out of what I'm doing. <laughs> I think uh, Dagny, one of our ETs, uh, shared that she got one of those um, um, I Believe in Aliens coffee mug. Yeah, I, thought cool. I go to represent. Uh, I've got my ET shirt on. Uh, <laughs> so, all right. We have, I, you know, uh, Beth, one of our ETs, submitted some questions, and I'm sure we all have some kind of questions that we want to kind of – Start winding this down to close it out to ask her questions, make her conclusions, that kind of thing. Um, does this have any does sleep paralysis have anything to do with sleepwalking? They're just the opposite, right? So have people seen this sleepwalking? Well, when you look at when sleep paralysis and sleep sleepwalking come in, it's usually during that REM phase. So I think it's kind of um, just however your body wants to handle that yeah. disruption. So they are kind of in that same time frame of sleep. It's not in the deep sleep and it's not in the light sleep. It's in that REM phase. So, um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't think they're the same. I think it's, but it's how your body's handling disruption, kind of like how, you know, like a night terror, you know, or right. something like that. So. Donnie, were you going to say something? I guess not. Well, you brought up night terrors. So that was the next question. Could, could this be compared to night terrors, you think? Maybe. Um, I, I mean, I have a child that when she was younger had night terrors, but she didn't scream. She laughed like maniacally it was kind wow. of worse um but, yeah. but she she never knew she didn't remember um and so she we would wake up to hearing her laugh we could in front of her face you know do all of this she had to get through it and then she would lay back down and yeah. go to sleep and it could last five to ten minutes but wow. she didn't remember it ever right. so the difference is like and usually people who sleepwalk they don't remember True. sleepwalking but this night paralysis they remember and i think it's because they're waking up so i'm wondering if it's that time where they're going from rim into light Could sleeping be. you know but they remember it one of the things i do if i see something at night yeah you know, i don't want to move to scare it away i don't want to know that i know that it's there so like one of the things i do is i'll like clench my fist you know slightly and you know if you can do this you're not paralyzed if you can move your toes you're not paralyzed because one of the things i've noticed from doing the research is when people became aware and reacted to yeah. this happening it was gone you right. know it didn't linger so exactly yeah i mean that's it, it does disappear immediately so well, that brings up another point. Is it all just a dream? You know, are are these, you know, did Donnie and Tim and Tommy experience, or were they, what's the word? Um, oh, I don't remember, the word, but it has to do with dreaming and you think you're awake kind of thing. But, you know, is this all just part of a dream and a night terror? I don't know. I mean, Tommy knows what he saw was real. Donnie knows what he saw was real. Tim knows what he saw was real. You know, Christine has seen things and she knows the real, you know. I wasn't asleep. Right. True. True. But I was a teenager and teenagers thrive on sleep deprivation. <laughs> so could I have been just, you know, deprived of sleep, that healing time of rest enough that, mm -hmm. you know, and it was late at night. You know, maybe I was just in that right frame of mind, you know. So, you know, and and Beth brought up an interesting question that I'd never thought about. She asked, is this entity, this hat man trying to communicate? I mean, we, we kind of get a consensus that he's drawing off our fear, but is he trying to? 
Thank you. That was something. <laughs> Thank <There> you. <laughs> That was John. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, John. <laughs> All right. And if if he is trying to communicate, I mean, what do you think, Tommy? Do you think it was trying to communicate with you? Well, he didn't say nothing. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> but I really don't. I really don't know. He might have been. Because it turns out after we researched in a little bit and had the medium come in to check the house out and everything, it's supposed to be blessing the house. We had one spot that she wouldn't even go to. She kind huh. of moved away from it as quick as she could. And that's what wow. needless to say, about three, about three days later, we was out of the house. Hmm. But um, it's like yeah. the other girl was saying, she felt like he didn't be, he scared me, but he didn't feel like he was evil. It, it was like, I kind of agree with what this other girl said. Like maybe he might have been some kind of messenger. I don't know what the message was. Yeah. Unless, unless, that, unless that message was to get out of there before something worse happened. True. True. But, well, I uh, heard, but I really I swear, a spirit will come and warn you, and the next day or two, something happens. Yeah. It's kind of like a moth man. I was thinking that, Andrew. When that yeah. media, when yeah. that media comes in, when that medium come in and she went through every room except for one, and when she got to that one room, she backed, she, she didn't turn around and step away from it. She backed right into me and then turned around when it was, then turned, got away from oh. it. She said, I ain't going wow. to that room, you don't leave it. Wow. So there may be, yeah. But yeah, Andrea, I had thought Mothman because there's there's belief that uh, he's, he, he's, he is a sign of warning for something, we you know, could be different things. Um, suppositions, what do y'all think? Narcolepsy, insomnia, sleep disorders, mental disorders, schizophrenia? I read a study on schizophrenia um, and how people were experiencing shadow men, hat man, the hag, and then they were even, their experiences were even going as far as these things were violating them at night. Um, and so they went to a psychiatrist. This was a study that was done on these. I mean, it was a shadow people uh, <laughs> study, but they were also, uh, they noticed that these patients were also experiencing um, hearing uh, unattached voices you know, or seeing things also out of the corner of their eye during the day. So they were diagnosed with schizophrenia. Right. They were put on medicine to control the schizophrenia and they had like a 75 to 100% improvement. So here's the question though, was it a mental disorder all along? What were they so disturbed by their mental disorder, disorder that at night they were more susceptible to being attacked because they were in a weakened state right. or did the medication cause a suppression of what they were experiencing so that it didn't bother them anymore. I always kind of wondered like, you know, it, it really yeah. it can only be one of those three things. So, um, but that was the only time? thing I found. They actually, I mean, they called it like because it was violating them. It was a study on a uh, psychi psychiatric study and it was on on an incubus and succubus attacks on patients. Well, yeah, that was, I, that, I had that in the notes to go over that. What did you say, Tommy? My, my question on that, though, is when they was doing these studies, was these people that was going to their house at night to sleep or was they staying in a facility they were sleeping in their own home they were they were coming to the psych psychologist to psychiatrist to explain what was happening to them but they did have sleep studies done on them you know mm -hmm. they had a full gamut of studies to you know rule anything out you know um blood tests they had their thyroid checked uh sugar you know, all all of those different levels of you know anything that can cause a problem they had all of that checked um, prior, yeah. and so they were given the, the diagnosis. I, I, I kind of felt like it was a little unfair, I'll be honest. I, I, I because... 
I'm sorry. Go ahead. What? Oh, I, all I said is I, I thought it was unfair because so many of us, it, it takes a lot of bravery sometimes to admit that something's going on. And one of our biggest fears is, is somebody's going to look at us and say, you're crazy. <laughs> and so, it, and it's an awful feeling, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's a terrible feeling to have somebody look at you and say, you, you're making that up when you're not. Right. What, did you say, what were you saying, Tommy? Uh, yeah, I was just kind of, I was curious because if it was something that they was doing at just a facility, it actually could have been something attached to that facility and not to, not with them, actually with them. But if they was going home, that's a whole different case. Yeah, it was. They were at home. One of this, one, I mean, the, eight, the age of the patients were from 17 to 28. Wow. So they were even younger. Wow. And, and I thought that was interesting also that they were all younger. Well, let me say this. We, we can make suppositions all day long, but we would never, um, it, it would never insinuate that we think someone who's seen the hat man is a schizophrenic or having mental disorders or dealing with a succubus or uh, incubus, you know, we're just throwing out possibilities. So if you're watching this and, and, and you've experienced that, man, we're not saying that you're schizophrenic. Okay. No, no. <laughs> possibilities, you know, some out there the experience it may be, but we don't believe that most are. We're just throwing out possibilities. Now we're gonna close it down now. And what I'm gonna do is go to each one of the ETs here and let them give a final statement on what they believe about the hat man. We're gonna start with Donnie. Donnie, your final thoughts on the hat man. I, uh, like I said, I've had two experiences. And I, you know, there's definitely, I believe they feed on your fear. Um, it just depends really sometimes on your state of mind. And they're just, they, they're here for some reason. Um, like I said, I believe that they feed off your fear. The reason they're here is not really known. That's okay. <laughs> That's all. All right, Christine, your final thoughts. Well, I don't know if it's just a hat man or if it's everything combined together, but there, in my opinion, there is something out there. Sometimes it is to warn us of something coming, and then other times it's just trying to you know, say, hey, look, there is something more besides this life. You know, don't don't put off what you can do today. Right. Go ahead and do whatever you can do because, you know, you're not guaranteed forever. But, you know, just realize that there is something more to this. And, you know, just do what you can do while you're here and I think that some of them come to show us that, you know, our loved ones are still watching over us. They still care about us. They're not wanting wow. to be forgotten. That's good. That's good. All right, Tommy, what are your final thoughts? I agree with Christine. Yes, they're here. They have something. They have a reason. We just don't necessarily know the reason. I also agree with Donnie that they do feed off of our fears. I have just been lucky enough so far that I haven't been injured or had anything bad happen. And hopefully I won't. Yeah. But the big thing I want to say is if you have something that happens, don't be afraid to tell somebody. Find somebody to talk to about it. The more you hold it in, the worse it's going to be on you. There you go. You're stealing my thunder. All right, Tim. <laughs> Great minds think a lot. Right, <laughs> Tim, your final thoughts. I think some of the, the, the hat men that we read into are going to be physical spirits. I, I um, I often tell guests on tours that every spirit that we come across, nearly every spirit that we come across, has got some kind of history behind it. It right. wants to tell us something about either itself or about the past. Um, and I think in my case, you know, that's what I've run into more frequently. 
um, particularly with the one that, that I dealt with, you know, 20 years ago, is that that spirit, it probably did feed on fear. I think a lot of different spirits feed on fear. I think even human spirits will feed on fear because it gives them the energy they need to manifest yeah. themselves in some way. Um, but it does come down to, you know, let somebody know. Talk to different groups. You know, if you're in Kansas, Missouri, Iowa, Nebraska, get in touch with me. I can get you in touch with somebody in your area that's going to be able to help you. Both of you, stealing my thunder. All right, Andrea, <laughs> your final thoughts. Um, so my final thought on the hat man is I, I personally, I don't think it's something good. Um, I think that um, it's something that if you are experiencing this on a, on a regular basis, um, you need to reach out and find somebody that's going to help you. Um, I, I, I think that it's wanting you to be afraid. So one of the things that, you know, I will do is, you know, and everybody does it different, but I will pray before I go to bed. And I'm like, I don't want, I want to sleep peacefully. Right. You know, I want a good night's rest. I want to heal while I'm asleep. I don't want to be bothered. And I think that that's the best way to handle that is to kind of protect yourself. And that's the best way to handle it, especially when you're dealing with something that wants you to be afraid and it wants to feed on that fear. Why would you let it? So, and you know, I'm, I'm located here in Ohio. If you're watching this and you want to reach out, I will help you find somebody to help you. You know, guys, it's amazing. You know, you all kind of just, we are, I mean, we're all heading in the same direction there. I wrote this little thing as a closing comments. While the shadow people of the hat man seem to be evil incarnate, please remember the old adage about vampires. They can only come in if invited. Now, I know that's not a perfect analogy, but the intent using it is the same, that this entity seems to only stay when nothing is done to remove it. While this seems to be an extreme invasion into your psyche, it seems that every case, in every case, any outside influence can interrupt what they seem determined to do. So like Andrew said a while ago, move your hands, move your fingers, move your toes, something to disrupt what is going on. Now, I may be wrong, but at this time, I, I don't really know of, of anybody experiencing a shadow person that got physically injured. There may be, and I may have missed it. But I haven't heard of any physical harm. But extreme and intense fear, oh, most definitely, that is there. And that's every witness has voiced the same thing. If you come in contact with one of these entities, it's been said already, contact someone you trust and tell them about it. Share your experience. It's like Lynn and I were talking last night. If you go into an old shed that's full of roaches and you open the door and turn on the light, what happens? They scatter. The roaches scatter. Okay. Sometimes it's just getting it out in the open can do wonders in alleviating the situation. Find a trusted friend or a family member. And another step, and it's already been mentioned, would be actually get help and bring someone into your home that has expertise in this area. It could be your pastor, your priest, um, you know, a paranormal investigator. Tommy talked about getting a medium. Someone, I mean, we're not encouraging you to go outside your belief system. Okay. If you have complete trust in your pastor, call your pastor. If you're not a church goer and you don't attend services, call a psychic or medium that you trust, okay? Find someone that you trust. That's the point. Because once you start talking about these things, and I believe Tommy's going to see that with the lady he's helping. When she starts, and she's already started talking about it, I think these things are going to start to recede. And again, it's already been voiced, but if you don't know of anybody that can help you with this, then contact us here at Strange Journeys. We will find you someone that can help you. Well, guys, another awesome show. You were amazing as usual. Awesome, amazing. And we thank the ETs and we thank everybody for being here. And uh, it's time for our closing bid. 
two weeks with a special guest Kent Rasmussen of Salem Paranormal and we'll be talking about ghost hunting. See you soon. Thanks hey, for being here.